Okay, well, the next one is, is called the sharp-edged orifice, okay? And essentially what we've got here is we've got a pipe. Okay, and inside the pipe we've got this little circular hole, okay? Which we call an orifice, okay? We've got a fluid flow and the density, as we, as we said, we're dealing with incompressible flow, so the density is a constant. Okay, and as the flow is approaching this hole, okay, well, basically, obviously, the flow, particles of fluid in the middle are just going to go straight through the hole, but the particles at the edge have to um, go around the hole, okay? And so we've got pressure one to the left-hand side of the hole, and on the right-hand side of the hole, we've got pressure two. And so, as I said, we've got a thin flat plate with a circular hole. And the advantage of such a system is it's quite inexpensive. It's quite a simple thing. We don't have to make a nice, uh, smooth, contracting um, and you know, converging, diverging nozzle. Okay? But the significant the problem with this is it comes with a significant loss of energy due to what's known as turbulence. Okay? And we'll cover turbulence in greater detail next semester. Okay? But basically, the, the, there's a, quite a large amount of loss going on because once, once it goes through the hole, certainly behind these, uh, behind these bits here, we're going to get a lot of turbulence. Okay? And so we can do the same thing. We can apply continuity to this. Okay? So V dot equals AC. And so we know that the reduction in area around the orifice... Okay, relates to an increase in speed. Okay? And we know that from Bernoulli, that if you increase speed, ignoring Z here, if you increase speed, the pressure must go down. And so again, we've got a P1 is greater than P2. And again, we can measure that using a YouTube manometer. I'm not going to go through the details of the maths again because it's exactly the same. Okay? And so we can just do the same thing. For a liquid fluid, we know that the pressure difference is the monometer density minus the actual density of the flow you're measuring <laughs> multiplied by Hg, okay? And for a gas, it's the same thing, but we can ignore the flow, uh, the fluid that's flowing, its density, because it's so low compared to the monometer fluid. Okay, so you end up with this equation. And again, the same theory applies when we're working out the... Uh, the um, the uh, flow rates, okay? So we've got the theoretical flow rates here. That's exactly the same equations as you saw before. And here, A1 over A2. Well, A1 is the pipe diameter, sorry, the pipe area, cross-section area, which we can get from D1, okay? And A2 is going to be the orifice diameter, okay? D2. And so that we can get that, in that, we can use that to calculate what A2 is. Again, you can replace A1 over A2 here with D1 over D2 to the power of 4. It's exactly the same thing. Now, there are some interesting aspects to the sharp-edged um, sharp orifice, okay? And one of them is the fact that, basically, you've got a contraction in the flow after the orifice, okay? So, if we think about here, we've got a fluid flow and it's across the diameter of the pipe, okay? Obviously, through the orifice, it's going to be um, through the diameter of the orifice. But the narrowest bit of the flow is actually just after the orifice. And we call this the vena contractor, okay? And that is basically here, okay? And so, if you imagine the flow here is, you know, flowing through D, D1, our diameter of the pipe. Here it's flowing through the diameter of the orifice, D2. But the narrowest bit is, we can, you know, is, is around where we've got this pressure mark, Okay? And the, the diameter of that flow is, is even smaller. Okay? And the ratio of this vena contractor, okay, to the orifice diameter is called the coefficient of contraction. Okay? And the typical value is about 0.66. And this coefficient of contraction contributes to the losses associated with the uh, actual flow rate compared to the theoretical flow rate. And so our discharge coefficient this time Okay, it's related to the, this vena contractor as well as the, the, the losses associated with it just going through a, a hole to the change in diameters. Okay? So we've got this CC value. Okay? 
And we've also got the change in velocity just, you know, just due to the fact that uh, there's friction in the pipe. And so that's going to be give us a coefficient of um, velocity. Okay, so we've got a CV value. And to get the actual discharge coefficient, you multiply them together. So the actual flow rate will always be less than the theoretical value. For the sharp end velocity, you've got the contractor or the contraction coefficient, and you've got the velocity coefficient. The discharge coefficient, which is the actual flow rate divided by the theoretical flow rate, is equal to CC multiplied by CV, the coefficient of contraction multiplied by the coefficient of velocity. And so in these typical values, we've got 0.66 for the contraction coefficient, again about 0.98 for the velocity coefficient, or well, you multiply them together, you get about CD value of about 0.65. So as you can see, a sharp-edged orifice meter is considerably less efficient um, than, a, than a venturi meter. Okay, the venturi meter we had about 0.98 as our CD value, and the sharp-edged orifice is 0.65. And so the comparison between the theoretical and the actual flow rates is obviously quite considerable. And so our flow rate here, we've got CD, which is our 0.65 multiplied by 8, and so that is exactly the same equation as we saw before. 